In this session, in the series of the size blade, I will cover the sharpening of the blade. And that's the most important part of all issues. Because a dull blade makes a dull day. And it doesn't matter whether you're the best mower in the world or you have the finest blade. If it's dull, it will not perform well. It will not cut. And uh, unfortunately, the, there is no quick fix for creating a very good sharp edge. You need to have some skills and equipment. <clears throat> but first, uh, we'll uh, make the question, what is sharpness? Sharpness is generally considered to be the very tip of the edge that has the smallest possible area that we can create and then it will be very sharp, it cuts well through tomato or through paper or something. But that's not all. If we have a stem here and we have an edge here and it's pushing towards the stem, the that very tip of the edge, the end of the blade, will only open up the cut. Then on its way there will be friction towards the sides in this slope that is created on all blades, on knives. And the lower that slope is, the less friction it has. So that's what we want. But it must be in balance with the steel quality too thin and the steel will actually bend or crack uh, and it can't hold those forces. So we have to find uh, the perfect spot if there is one. We'll see. We'll cover uh, three examples of edge geometry in this video. First, uh, the bad one. In Northern Europe, there is uh, there are blades that are of a harder steel, and usually they are actually created with a very high slope, about 20 degrees, like this, 20 degrees. And that is a very sturdy and very tolerant edge. Uh, and it could actually, it's actually more fitting to an axe than a scythe blade. <clears throat> it will hold very, very, very well. It's very strong, but it also creates a quite deal of friction. So it's not an ideal, ideal edge geometry for a scythe blade. We will get rid of that one because it's bad. Then we have uh, another example from the southern type of south blades that are, that are usually traditionally peened with a uh, cold hammering technique and they are uh, hammered so thin that you actually should be able to to push uh, with your thumbnail uh, on the on the edge and see how it bends well if you can bend it that easy it's certainly a very fragile and not very fitting edge for a scythe blade that are used in the fields among branches, stones, and nests and so on. We can do it much better. And uh, the reason for damages on scythe blades are usually caused by this kind of ugly edge. We get rid of that ugly edge too. Then there is the good edge actually. The good edge is the optimal edge and it's uh, not surprisingly something between those edges. First we create a, a slope that is very low, with low friction, about 10 degrees, 8 to 10 degrees. Uh, but that edge, <laughs> primary edge, will <coughs> not hold very well. Uh, so we have to create another edge on the top of it, a secondary bevel, a honing edge. 
Now that is made in uh, a higher, steeper angle, about 20 to 40 degrees. And then we will get an edge that is very sturdy. Actually, it can be used also for tree saplings. It cuts everything from fine grasses, fine grass cutting, to tree saplings. It's good for everything, for every use of the scythe. It's the perfect edge geometry for a scythe blade, according to my investigations and experience. You shouldn't use anything else, actually. That's the good edge. To sharpen the edge, to create this edge, we should begin with cleaning the blade carefully with a brush, or brush, water, and uh, so it's uh, no sand or particles on it. And we should also check the edge for damages, so it's in good shape. Then we have to know, to set the first primary edge, we have to know how far into the edge uh, this first primary edge will go. So we have to measure the thickness of the blade. And um, in this case it's about 0 0.8 or 9. 0.9 millimeters thick and then I should have uh, about 5 millimeters into the edge which I, you can see the old the old one this is already set so I only have to to make it slightly better to maintain it some times now and then. Well, I'm using a grinder like this one. I have a stool, a vise, and I put this grinder upside down. And I can then create the edge on the brown part of this grinder, belt grinder. This is a very useful tool actually. I make my handles for the snarls with this one too. So it's useful both for wood and for actually for grinding metal knives like this one. To make this uh, grinding you have to be very steady on your hand, very careful and you have to move it all the time because it's a round edge and you don't want a round uh, spot, a groove on your edge. You move it with a very light pressure all the time and always checking on the um, because you're grinding on the lower side so you can't see what you're doing you have to turn it around and see what you're grinding actually so <coughs> that's uh, how we will make it we we'll, uh, I need some good glasses here actually as you can see
when I'm getting to be finished, I will check the width of the of the edge here, and I'm usually also to be more precise using a micrometer, zero point four, zero point five millimeter thick, three millimeters into the edge, if it's uh, holding the correct angle. That's about it for the primary edge. <coughs> when you have done the, the primary edge like this, there is um, usually some burst to remove. And I use uh, a cloth or some paper to remove it. So we just on both sides like this. To prepare it for the honing, the secondary edge to be made. Now, when we have set the primary edge, we should uh, make the honing edge. And here I'm using a quite revolutionary improvement to the honing technique. A whetstone that traditionally has been used since the Middle Ages are not creating a, a very precise edge and it will also create a bar on the other side because we are making it along the uh, with the edge and not towards the edge. With this tool I'm actually grinding along the edge and there will be no burrs on either sides. So this is a ceramic wheel. Uh, I mounted it on a piece of wood and <coughs> what we are doing is simply we are moving it along the blade like this. The wheel should be turning just slightly. So it's a friction between the wheels that creates this Good edge. It's quite easy when you have uh, learned to do it. But it's very important that you understand how this works. It's not so that you will move the blade uh, in parallel with this wheel. wheels. You have to twist the wheel and have an angle actually. You will have a slightly angle between the blade, the edge, and the wheels. So what you're doing is placing it on the edge and then twist it until you feel the resistance that, that you can't move it anymore. Then you have the good position. And you should roll it over the blade like this. So you can make this as many times as you want it until you have the good edge. I've got another wheel uh, from a dismantled uh, grinder. It was a much smaller wheel with a harder ceramic substance. I've used this for five years or so to my kitchen knives and it's still going strong so it's, it's very difficult to wear it out. It's the same thing here. Very good too. It's important that you use the, the finest grades of wheels that you can get. The coarse are too coarse for the size blade, I have noticed. How many times you have to do this is depending on the edge, uh, the shape of the primary edge and if you have honed it before. last step is to check the sharpness. I'm using an old 
instruction book of some kind, uh, common copy paper, and um, you should be able to cut it quite easily without uh, ripping the paper apart like this in slices quite easy right this is sharp <laughs>